got the thumbs up from the balcony. So we are ready to begin our service of worship. My name is David Oxley, so the Lord be with you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the service of worship here at First United Methodist Church of Park Ridge. We are blessed to be a reconciling congregation open to people of all ages, races, ethnic backgrounds, family structure, economics, sexual orientation, gender identity. Wherever you come from and wherever you're going, we invite you to receive the blessing of God's Spirit this morning and the welcome of this congregation. Thank you for being in service this morning and thank you for watching this worship service online today. We continue in our worship series. Actually, this is the conclusion of our worship series of Peace Together in Christ. These beautiful quilts that have blessed us throughout this January worship series, providing us with comfort and coziness and reminding us of our call to unity in Christ the freedom we have in our faith, and the blessing that we have received to the commitment to be the extensions of Christ's blessing in the world. We'll hear today about what that blessing means in regards to peacemaking, bringing the broken pieces together in a new creation, less of Christ and God's grace. I'll share a few announcements later on in our service of worship about upcoming events and opportunities for mission and ministry. You can always see those announcements online at our website and Facebook page and in your emails. And I'll encourage everyone to please read your emails as it comes out every Thursday and participate in many wonderful things that are coming up, particularly in the month of February for mission and outreach. I'll get to those announcements later on. Today, let us receive the gift of God's blessing for the work that is before us. Be peacemakers in this loving yet broken world. Thanks be to God who blesses us for the service of worship. Let's begin with our songs of praise this morning.
are those who come before the Lord this day. Let the people be blessed by the grace, love, and power of God. Rejoice! The fabric of our faith is being made strong. Let the people be pieced together as one church united in Christ. Smith, 
and uh, Katie Hansen and Andrew Thomas to come forward. And they're going to share a little bit about uh, these beautiful creations here. But this one in particular, you'll have to come up and get a closer look to it and look gently upon it because this quilt here is from Laura Naylor and it's from 1892. It should not be here. It should be in a family archive. It should be in a display case, but yet it provides to us the love of her great-grandmother, Maine Evans. Um, before she was married in 1892, um, she had created this quilt. Uh, the family is from, originally from Wisconsin or so, and they went on to have many children and many grandchildren and many great-grandchildren. Uh, the family uh, was established in Cambria, Wisconsin, and now this is the treasure of Laura Naylor and the family. So we give thanks for the legacy of the love that is represented in this world. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Lois, I'm going to hand the mic to the persons and I'll play uh, uh, the person who watched. Okay. So I have two quilts. Um, the first one is the that one my mother made um, for Rex and I for our wedding. And uh, it is a combination of all of our dresses. My right two sisters, so and my mom's dresses, so we'll have a lot of our clothes that my mom has made. Um, and Rex and I will be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary this Hawaiian quilt. When we were in Hawaii, we saw this in a quilt shop, and Frank was like, you can do this quilt. Yeah. Uh, so I gave him the kit, and that was a challenge. So um, I had to help with some new clothing friends at the community center, and uh, when Dagger is the one that we should be with this one. My mom was hand quilted, and anybody, she had it set in the dining room, and then somebody came around from visitors, neighbors, they could put a couple of stitches in it, and my father even put a couple of stitches in it. Thank you very much. Let's Good morning. Um, the books that I brought were all made by my mother, Jane Schreiber, and the oldest one is um, the green quilt in the double wedding ring pattern. My sister has the matching quilt because these were the quilts that we had on our beds when we were children. So this is from um, the early um, 1950s. Um, the other big quilt is the blue and white one. Um, like my mother, I really love blues. And so at some point, I asked her if she would make me a, a quilt. And we, we got a deal where um, I bought the fabric and paid her a small amount of money. She kept track of all the time she spent on the quilt, so it was pennies that I paid her, but I don't have that information anymore. Um, so she had always sewed, she sewed all our clothes, but in around 1976 she focused exclusively on quilting, and then 1976 through the next 30 years she she was a quilter. Um, the uh, the lap quilt was behind the um, rocking chair. She always had lots of projects, and that Christmas she made eight lap quilts, and for all the immediate family, and everyone uh, related to the person. Sarah's had soccer balls, and he had musical instruments. Um, this one is mine. Can anybody guess what that pattern might be? Books. So that's bookshelves. So that was 1996. Now she was known for not having everything finished on time. So I don't remember who got a finished lap quilt that Christmas and who got a box with something partially made. Um, She also um, sewed and sold things, well, she taught quilting, and sold things in quilt shops. 
This was a project she did, I think, for herself, really, miniature quilts. So there's a, a whole series of miniature quilts that she made. And so then you just, um, and this actually has kind of a 1950s look to it, but it was made, you know, sometime in the 90s. There's also lots of wall paintings around that she made. I've got so many because, you know, after she died, my sister and I invited her collection, and there's my collection, and uh, there's many that other people enjoy. But she also bought a lot of fabric and had a lot of unfinished product, projects. So one thing I'm proud of is a couple things like this pillow, where she did the detailed applique work and that's all that there was, was the detailed applique work. And then I was able to take fabric from her collection and put it together in a pillow. And the patriotic quilt in the back is the same thing. She um, pieced it together, and then I put the border on it. Gwen Jager, who um, Lois mentioned, did the machine quilting. Now my mother did all hand quilting, but that was machine quilted. So I'm, I'm really proud of the, the couple projects where she started it, did the artwork, and I finished it. I really think she was an artist and a quilter because anything she did, the color, I mean, the handwork was beautiful, and the color combinations were really, really special. Good morning. Um, 
um, my quilts are made, one's definitely made by my grandmother and the other one, we're not sure if we made it, but it was in her thing. And um, give the picture here. <clears throat> the one I gave told me was my wedding gift. You know, she gave, I was dating this guy pretty seriously in high school, so my grandmother quickly put this together. You know? <laughs> and we didn't get married, but. Um, <laughs> So I received it about 1972. Um, my daughter found it and loved it and had done her bed a long time. So it's pretty standard. But Grandma used um, fabrics from new old clothing, scraps. She always had her scrap bag by her chair every night. She would sit and cut out the pieces and stitch things together. Um, but she was also a Methodist and was called WSCS back then, when the Society for Christian Service. But their fundraiser was not soup, it was not cookies. <laughs> their fundraiser was actually quilting the quilts. And my grandmother had the frame at her house, so the ladies would come, well, first you had to audition your stitching before you could be part of the quilting. So you had to make, I forget the number of stitches you had to have per inch, but and to audition to be part of the uh, quilting team. So that they, this is a picture from 1921. My grandma's in the front here with my dad sitting in her knee. Um, so you had to audition and the ladies would come, and I remember playing underneath the quilt frame when the ladies came, very much like our young W. You know, they'd bring their lunch, <laughs> sit and chat and stitch and stitch, and then you got charged by the amount of thread that they used to culture put together. So that was their fundraising. The other quilt up there, um, it's a little faded and it's lost a lot of pieces. Um, but it's all hand pieced and hand quilted. Um, too much left. So it's my story about my quilts. But if you have a chance, I'll leave this picture up here. We rejoice today in the artistry, the craftsmanship, the story, the pieces brought together for these new creations. And we, again, offer our blessing to those that have shared them with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. So stick around a little bit after worship today, and I'm sure some of those folks should be delighted to share uh, with you more about the quotes, and you can see them in detail after the service concludes. Amen. Here's this reading from one of the Apostle Paul's letters. It is Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Listen for the word of God. Now, before faith came, we were in prison and guarded under the law, under faith, that would be revealed. <clears throat> until the law was our disciplinarian, until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Yes, this is my chance, since we're talking about the pieces making up the whole, to thank Amy and Janelle for singing this morning, and to say that I'm privileged to play with a guest musician, uh, Sean Finnegan, here from uh, the residence here in uh, Park Ridge. So thank you, Sean. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Janelle.
bring into our worship service the prayers of our hearts and our minds, our living, our experiences. May God's blessing be upon us as we offer them to God in this moment. There are prayer cards in your pew available for your joys and concerns, as well as a prayer sort that we've been utilizing as an instrument to catalog our prayers in various categories. I invite you to find that at the end of your pew that would be helpful to you this morning as we offer these petitions to God. Again, those prayer cards can be filled out and placed in our offering plate at the conclusion of our service this morning. May these prayers be given as well to our prayer tree, and may God's mercy be found within each. Join with me in an attitude of prayer. Holy God in Christ, as we pray, keep our hearts and minds open to the work of your Spirit, providing to us access to your grace. Be with each and every one of us, anywhere and everywhere, as we gather to seek the goodness of your will. Holy Lord of life and love, receive our petitions of prayer. For those who are poor in spirit and bank account, receive our prayer. For those who mourn and those who care, receive our prayer. For those who hunger and thirst in body and soul, receive our prayer. For those who make peace and just unity, receive our prayer. For those with whom we struggle to maintain relationship and those who seek our forgiveness, receive our prayer. Holy One, through the love of Christ, we are made to be one in community of faith. We give witness today to the good news of Jesus Christ. Through our care for one another, may it increase according to your will. May our hope for the earth serve as our common inspiration and our faithfulness to the church, our shared strength. Again, O oh Lord, we pray for all those who have died by coronavirus, for those whose health is compromised and in danger, may your mercy be in abundance. For those who are enduring chemotherapy, those suffering mental illness and physical pain, for those awaiting surgery, for ones we know who are grieving the loss of a child, parent, a loved one this day. We pray again, O oh Lord, for our health care workers and first responders, for the public servants who are keeping us safe this day. We pray your mercy may be found within and among them. We pray for the unemployed and the overworked. We pray for those who hunger today for daily bread and justice. We pray for ones living paycheck to paycheck. We pray for the Northeast, O oh Lord, after severe storms. We pray for the safety and care of all those affected by winter's activities. We pray for our communities in need of your care and your attention, O oh God, for our neighbors, for ones displaced from their homes, those in retirement, nursing homes, needing our care, O oh God. Call us to provide your mercy to them. We pray for our country and our elected leadership. We pray for the world and its peoples, for regions in chaos and in conflict, for nation states making for war. We pray for the refugee and the war torn. We pray for the displaced. We pray for the forgotten. O oh, Holy Lord, bring us into your power and to your love. We give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide to each of us. Send your Holy Spirit to bind us together in words of love and harmony and blessing. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world as people who pray and learn and share life and break bread and bear good news. As we grow in the Spirit, O oh Lord, help us to remain in prayer together. Send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever.
and those experiences, I'm going to venture again. So I'm going to suggest that there's two things that have held you together in those times. I'm going to suggest that the grace of God stitched into every portion of your life held you together. The grace of God for you to use. The grace of God for you to share. And that second is a purpose. A purpose of peacemaking that can emerge. That can emerge with the pieces. In adversity and in persecution, there remains work to do. God being our helper. It is the work of the Beatitudes that help us remember when everything seems to be in pieces, we remain beloved of God. We remain beloved of God. This is the action of God's grace. God will never fail us. God's mercy works to thread the portions back together. It may not look or feel as it once did, for our faith understands that in Christ, all things are being created anew. Try this out with me. Washington Post reporter Kathy Free tells the story of Fred Brown, who was 25 years into a 15 years to life prison sentence when he discovered that he enjoyed cutting out fabric squares and sewing them into quilts. When I was a kid, my mom sewed quilts, but I never thought of sewing as something I'd want to do, said Brown, an inmate at the South Central Correctional Center in Lincoln, Missouri. A group of inmates gathered daily in the sewing room of the center to volunteer to make quilts for children in foster homes. Said Brown, right now I'm working on a puppy quilt for a 13-year-old boy. I don't know anything about him, but I have a feeling he's going to love this quilt. Begun as a way for inmates to contribute to the community around them, the finished quilts are auctioned by local charities at fundraisers or sold as personal gifts birthday gifts for the foster children in the same county where the prison is located. More than 2,000 quilts have been made by the inmates from fabric donated by to the prison. More than a few of the men who participated in the program grew up in foster care themselves. They've been through their own adversity. Is quilting a way to restore the pieces of a torn apart life? The project director notes among the inmates participating in the quilt project a sense of community, pride, and purpose has been established. Emerging out of adversity, a new reason for living has been found by many. Is this peacemaking from the pieces of adversity, hard knocks, and broken dreams? Think on that with me. Think on this with me, too, that the Beatitudes illustrate how blessed we are of God, that we are blessed of God such that we can share the blessings of God. Grace is the glue that brings God to us and us with one another. It is grace, too, that leads us to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit for the commitment it takes towards making peace and even shalom out of pieces. Are you familiar with that Hebrew word, shalom? Shalom reveals to us one of the many blessings of God. Shalom is wholeness of mind, body, and soul. It is unity of identity and purpose. It is blessing for each person and all people. It is blessing for community, both intimate and global. Global, yes. Shalom is God's promise that the whole world might be one in mutual blessing. When and how that time will come? Tikkun is another one of God's blessings. Tikkun, again, in the Hebrew, means to heal, to repair, to piece together, and to transform the world. One form of tikkun is the movement begun by Rabbi Michael Lerner of Jewish and interfaith groups and secular nonprofit organizations working as one to empower people towards peacemaking by embracing love, compassion, and empathy in order to confront past and counter current cultures of persecution. Persecution, if we're not aware, is an act of aggression by an individual or group towards another person or group due to an actual or perceived difference 
an ideology or lifestyle. Persecution happens via bigotry verbalized, racism codified, extremism vilified, antagonism justified, intolerance weaponized. Human history is filled with many varied forms of persecutions, all of which have one thing in common, the quest to tear apart the fabric, the whole of humankind. One person or one group at a time. It was Jesus who warns of persecution to come for his followers. Persecution to come for us. But I wanted a kind of faith that's not going to get me bad looks for saying Merry Christmas. We know there's a bit more to it, don't we, friends? A lot more. We're just in Matthew chapter 5, and already Jesus is setting forth an agenda that he knows will not only cause his followers to incur the wrath of the powerful of the first century Palestine, but also will get him killed. What is this revival agenda? It is the building of beloved community, whereby love of God and love of neighbor becomes the measure of every interaction. Beloved community is God's divine nature embodied by humankind. In Galatians, Paul writes, because we are a new creation in Christ, distinctions of nationality, class, and gender are, are irrelevant, irrelevant and never used, never meant to be used to isolate or separate. In beloved community, God's people honor the beautiful tapestry of human diversity. In beloved community, God's people are united in seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly. In beloved community, God's people are not beholden to fear of persecution, even when it is endorsed by historical and contemporary systems of religious and racial intolerance. It has been two weeks since Congregation Beth Israel outside Houston was targeted by an anti-Semitic British national who held four people, including the rabbi, as hostage for 10 hours before escaped their captor by implementing training received after the mass shootings at the Tree of Life Congregation near Pittsburgh. Beth Israel describes itself as a sacred unit, community that celebrates and mourns together, supports and cares for one another, a diverse community united by a Jewish understanding that we are all responsible for each other. Columnist Robin Gibbon writes, despite everything that the congregants knew about the highs and dangers of hate and ignorance, they still kept the faith and opened the synagogue doors to the stranger who not. He was welcomed inside and offered tea as it was a cool Saturday night. Then he revealed his violent intentions. The foundations of faith, generosity, and trust were tested. Right to get on. It's quite astonishing that people who historically have felt the brunt of unfettered hatred and violence continue to extend their hand. Astonishing, isn't it? Gibbon continues, the generosity of Beth Israel calls to mind the welcoming embrace of worshipers at Mother Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. We recall how the black men and women opened their hearts to the stranger during a Bible study, and then he, a white supremacist, killed nine of them, including the senior pastor. The members had not allowed the history of American racism and violence against black churches to cause them to throw up physical barriers or emotional walls. They didn't look at the young man who would become their murderer as a stereotype or archetype. They saw an individual, writes Gamon, as beloved as God as they were. As beloved of God as they were. Rather naive, is it? No. It has always been and always will be the first piece of peacemaking. 
a commitment to honoring the blessedness that is each and every person. If the love of community is our template and the gratitude that God upon us and the grace of God are blue for the pieces, what is our commitment to peacemaking today? I'm asking that of myself as I'm asking that of you. What is my commitment to peacemaking from the pieces today? The challenges are personal. The challenges are communal. My faith leads me to trust deeply that God is moving us always from personal adversity to putting the pieces together in grace. Not in the same way, but in a new creation. Stitches and scars fully known. No shame. Only the shalom of hope for what the next portion of life might be, emerging from heartache and brokenness and pain. I'm not sure what peacemaking is needed for your heart or within your home or relationships with family or friends or co-workers or classmates. You've maybe identified some internal or interpersonal conflict that needs attention and you're giving it some. You're not rushing to judgment in those conversations but utilizing reason and listening and trust. Maybe you're seeking to address hurts and provide healing for wounds that have been created by your hand for others. A counselor or a therapist is providing a helpful process for you and your loved ones. Or you're working to forgive. Or you're working to be forgiven. And you're stepping out in faith that your good intentions will be met with grace and acceptance. All these things contribute to peacemaking. None are all that easy. The responses are not predictable. The timeline for results is out of our hands. The work of peacemaking can be a complicated process, as complicated as the quilting of uh, pieces of fabric with different colors and patterns, but blessed. Blessed each, is each one. And blessed are the pieces you hold in your hands towards the new creation God wants for you and for those who we pray for today. So too, in an age of ongoing persecutions of God's people of various race and religious groups to evaluate and to elevate the good news of peace must be a top priority for Jesus' followers. The common thread of our humanity is the blessedness we have in our God. As church, the unity we have in Christ is our strength. Towards gracious, generous, and transformative togetherness. A vision of a peaceful kingdom before us, with God being our helper. Today we ask for the blessing of the Holy Spirit to be upon us as we make peace, starting from our heart, extending to our home, and among those whom you love and also among those who you're challenged to keep close to you and in relationship. Today, the Holy Spirit helps us to recommit as church to God's will, that from within these walls to outside into this world, the stitches that we have, the pieces of faith, hope, and love that we share, these can be the gifts of our church to all of God's humankind. A gift of goodness and affirmation and faithfulness. Oh, it's big stuff, isn't it? All of the pieces we need to work together. Let's offer our commitment again to God's day and to the Spirit's leading. Join me in our social creed as you find it in your bullets and join me in the responses. And in all that we commit to today, may God be given. All praise. 
God in the Spirit, revealed in Jesus Christ, calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our Creator, that we may be one in divine love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps in the plunder of Earth's goodness, and so shall we. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. And so shall we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. Today is the day God calls our nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, and exalts when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And so shall we. Today is the day God blesses the poor in spirit, the mournful and meek, the hungry and thirsty, the merciful, pure in heart, and peacemakers and persecuted. And so shall we. If you can 
put a sticker on a piece of paper. You can be a part of this project. If you can cut paper, you can be a part of this project. If you can say a prayer and put posted on it, you can be a part of this project. So check out that station in our projects. For them too. Our all means all team has a quick announcement about a contest this morning then too. He said quick. Not really know quick. Let me try. I know that since everyone heard Gina Hendricks' incredible announcement last week, you've been wondering, sitting on the edge of your pew at home, how can I personally be involved in making the celebration of our 10 year anniversary special? Well, I have a way. We launched a t shirt design contest for a new all church t shirt. Uh, is anybody really more excited than that? <laughs> so the, the, the parameters for the for, for the shirt are in the last e newsletter. E and on your bullet. And the office is waiting in, with great anticipation to have that flood of designs come in so we can make that choice and see everyone in a new church t shirt. Thank you. A new t shirt implies Warmer weather, right? So we pray God's blessing to be upon our all means all team as they continue and offering us opportunities each month to celebrate our 10th anniversary of the Interreconciling Congregation. And again, keeping your prayers all those who are outside on this very cold day, keeping our streets safe and sound, and again, prayers for the northeast portion of our country and all those in harm's way today. For these prayers, and for our work together as a community of faith, we give God thanks and praise. Let us receive our morning's offerings, a token of all that we have been blessed with, given back to the Church of Jesus Christ. May our ushers please come forward to receive our gifts.
and to lead in compassionate service. All to the glory of your peace of the kingdom, we pray. Thanks be to you, O God. Amen. 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 Let's join together in our closing hymn of this morning's worship. And again, thank you, Sean, for being with us this morning. Here's the thing, let's leave. Yeah. Thank you.